Salmon Migration by Annie, Jessie, Kate, and Sarah. Before we dive into the physiology, here's a brief overview of the salmon life cycle. Like most fish, adult salmon lay eggs. These eggs hatch into tiny alevin, which live in their gravel nest. Once their food source has been fully absorbed, alevin wriggle out from the gravel, becoming fry. Fry then grow and develop into par. Once par have reached sufficient size, they migrate toward the sea and transition into smolt form. Once fully adapted, they are termed an adult. When adult salmon are ready to spawn, they will migrate upstream. Eggs are laid and fertilized, and the cycle continues. Let's take a look. The mother salmon carefully selects a section of clear gravel with good current flowing over it. She purposely dislodges stones, creating a depression to lay her eggs into. Seconds later, these eggs are fertilized with milk from her male. She then covers her precious eggs over with more gravel for protection. The resulting structure is termed a red. Fertilized eggs incubate in the gravel for one to three months, depending on the temperature of the water. Water flowing through the gravel provides dissolved oxygen to and removes waste from the eggs. After months of incubation, the eggs hatch. These baby salmon, termed alevins, are tiny, poor swimmers and have a soft bag of egg yolk attached to them, which they absorb as food. During this time, they remain in the gravel. Once the yolk sac has been completely absorbed, the little alevin wriggle up out of the gravel and begin to actively feed off insect larvae. They are now known as fry. Sibling fry are very competitive. The competition for food forces individual fry to leave the red and migrate toward deeper areas where food is more abundant and the salmon population is smaller. They are now termed a par. Par, like Sammy, continue to grow and migrate for one to three years. Growth is dependent on food abundance, water temperature, and competition. If the par has reached sufficient size by springtime, it will undergo a physiological change into a smolt and head towards the sea. If not, it will respond to environmental cues and will have to wait until next year. While living in upstream freshwater, Sammy was able to maintain her internal osmolarity through a number of mechanisms. These include active uptake of Na, Cl, and other ions through channels in her gills, kidney glomerulus reabsorption of NaCl, excretion of large quantities of dilute urine to remove excess water, and drinking little water. Sammy's journey towards the sea is long, and she must now face the challenge of adapting to a gradually changing environment. There are three main environmental cues that trigger Sammy's adaption. Increasing day length, increasing temperature, and increasing water osmolarity. These stresses stimulate the endocrine glands of the hypothalamic pituitary interrenal axis to secrete growth hormone IGF-1, cortisol, and thyroxin. These hormones induce a series of morphological and physiological changes, such as silvering of the skin, darkening of the fin margins, use of metabolic reserves, increased growth, and saltwater tolerance. Thyroxin plays a major role in metabolism. Increasing thyroxin ramps up Sammy's metabolic rate, allowing her to produce enough energy to power osmoregulation. She also begins to use up lipid stores for more energy. We will now look more closely at the effect of cortisol on chloride cells. Cortisol increases the size and number of chloride cells in the gills. Within each cell, it increases the activity of NAK ATPase pumps located on the basal membrane and upregulates the expression of CFTR channels on the apical membrane. The sodium-potassium ATPase pumps out three sodium and two potassium into the cell. This creates an electrochemical gradient that favors the diffusion of sodium into the cell. Powered by this, the NKCC then pumps out one sodium, one potassium, and two chloride ions from the extracellular fluid into the cell. Potassium then diffuses through a potassium channel down its concentration gradient. Similarly, chloride ions diffuse through CFTR-CL channels into the apical lumen, which empties into the external environment. Sodium then diffuses paracellularly from the ECF into the external environment. Sammy has effectively increased the net removal of NACL from her body. Sammy has now fully adapted to living in hyperosmotic ocean water. These adaptations do not just make her survive in seawater, they allow her to thrive. Now an adult salmon, Sammy spends one to seven years feeding and growing. Once Sammy has gathered sufficient fat reserves to tackle the perilous journey upstream, her journey begins. Salmon are guided to their natal stream by their sense of smell. 
This environmental cue triggers morphological changes, including a loss of silvery scales, a darkening of their color, upregulation of the production of gametes, and development of a kype. Back in the stream, there is little food to consume, and thus all the stored energy is channeled into the upstream migration. This journey is long and energetically exhausting due to the physiological obstacles that must be overcome. This is why you see salmon jump out of the water. Salmon must also tackle the challenge of osmoregulation as they travel through an increasingly freshwater environment. After traveling hundreds of miles, the salmon finally reach their spawning sites. Like her mother, Sammy will lay her eggs into carefully selected gravel to form a red. She can make up to seven red before her egg supply is exhausted. Her mate deposits his sperm onto the eggs for fertilization to occur. The longer the salmon stay in freshwater, the more their condition deteriorates, and once the spawning process is complete, it is only a short time until the salmon, like Sammy, cannot survive any longer. It's not all bad news. For all those adult salmon that have died, there will be many new salmon that hatch from all their hard work.